So permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to invite the Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke, to tell Nigerians what he's doing in the justice sector. Honorable Minister, sir. My brother and my friend, uh, Honorable Minister of Information, Chief Laboran Baku, thank you very much for the very kind sentiment expressed about my person and I mean, classifying me as a constitutional purist. My sister, my good friend, the Minister of Aviation, my brother, whom I popularly call the Juju Priest, a good distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Accountability of public officers and institutions is a key component of this administration's transformation agenda. I am therefore delighted at the opportunity to give account of our stewardship at the Federal Ministry of Justice in commemoration of the second anniversary of the President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan's administration. Let me start by expressing my deep appreciation to Almighty God for the rare privilege of serving this great country during the period under review, and His Excellency, President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, GCFR, for appointing me to this position of trust, of public trust. I also commend my brother, Mr. Labran Marco, the Honorable Minister of Information, for providing a veritable platform for ministers, for ministers to engage with the Nigerian people on the activities of their ministries and parastatas and for sustaining the vibrancy of this platform since the assumption of office. The Federal Ministry of Justice is essentially a service ministry established to provide legal support services to other ministries, departments and agencies of government to enable them to discharge their statutory functions in line with the overall policy trust of this administration. Consequently, we have remained focused in our collective endeavors services to the legal profession. These functions are discharged through core departments in the ministry, the legal units domiciled in the various MDAs who act as representatives of the Attorney General of the Federation within their respective organizations and the licensing offices located in the six geopolitical zones of the country. The ministry also supervises the activities of the following parastatums, namely Nigeria Law Reform Commission, Legal Aid Council, Council of Legal Education, National Drug Law Enforcement Agencies, National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies, Nigerian Copyright Commission, and the Regional Center for International Commercial Arbitration, Lagos. During the period under review, the Ministry made channelizing of reforms in the justice sector aimed at improving access to justice. Mainstreaming the implementation of the Freedom of Information Act, drafting of legislation in the critical areas such as the war against terror, money laundering, and other economic crimes consistent with Nigerian international obligations. Timely and efficient international cooperation on matters of extradition and mutual legal assistance, adoption of measures to improve on the administration of criminal justice and initiatives to reform our business and investment laws. To engender appreciation of the progress made in the areas mentioned above, the activities of, of some of the ministry's professional department and units are discussed below in great details. The major challenge within the prosecution of crime with the prosecution of the crimes and the ability of law officers of the ministry to effectively defend cases against the government has been a combination of lack of capacity, low morale, and poor supervision. These have, in the past, resulted in low percentage of cases that are diligently prosecuted, with adverse consequences and respect of civil cases, the high percentage of judgment debts, arbitral awards against the various MDAs. To stem this tide, vigorous capacity building trainings were embarked upon during the period under review. The Ministry also benefited from capacity building training from the Justice for All, 
the British Council, the United States Embassy, among others. This training impacted positively on our law officers to the extent that the ministry has drastically reduced its dependence on external solicitors and enhanced its prosecutorial abilities, leading to more effective prosecution of criminal cases and defense of civil matters. The code of conduct for prosecutors has been articulated to ensure that prosecutors observe the highest professional and ethical standards in the discharge of their prosecutorial duties, as well as imbibe best practices drawn from other jurisdictions to guarantee fair conduct of trials. The guidelines for prosecutors that is in the final stages of completion will complement the code of conduct for prosecutors. Ultimately, our desire to ensure efficient and effective prosecution conducted with the highest possible professional and ethical standards will be obtained. During the period under review, a total number of 75 cases of terrorism and insurgencies were received and prosecuted. 16 of the cases have been concluded with 8 convictions, while 35 were struck out. A good number of the terrorism cases were struck out because the accused person had escaped during the attack on the prisons in Bauchi and in Meduguri. The suspects will be arraigned as soon as they are apprehended. In addition, a total number of 244 general offenses, including culpable homicide, rape, armed robbery, and traffic offenses were handled. 15 cases have been concluded with 10 convictions. While the remaining cases are at different stages of trial, namely hearing, defense, ruling, and all judgment. Although phenomenal improvement have been made in the criminal justice system, the fact remains that the workings of the justice system is still not as fast as we would, we would desire. The abstainment of some of the accused persons who jump bail also frustrates or frustrated many of the cases. A total number of 60 petitions bordering on breach of rights of citizens lack of action on criminal matters by the law enforcement agencies and requests for takeover of cases from the police for, la for lack of diligent prosecutions were received. All the petitions were promptly handled and appropriate actions taken to address them. In many cases, the ministry took over prosecution of such cases which are tabulated in the table of content below and the summaries you will see from the from the papers to be distributed shortly. The period, under the period under review, particularly the year 2012, witnessed heightened litigation in the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, Federal High Court, the National Industrial Court, and the Economic Community Court of Justice. The ministry received about 539 civil cases, bordering on different claims which included the enforcement of fundamental human rights actions relating to title to land, wrongful termination of appointment by various MDAs, constitutional questions, contractual matters, etc. The Ministry was able to conclude over 86 matters in the domestic court, while others were before the ECOWAS Community Court of Justice. Most of the cases concluded were in favor of the government, and the Ministry was able to save the government the sum of 501 billion. 278,765,770 naira. In suits number, the number of suits involved were also stipulated. The ministry is the secretariat for the Presidential Committee on Judgment Debt Verification. The committee which has representative from the presidency, the Ministry of Finance, Budget Office, Accountant General of the Federation, the Nigerian Police Force, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and the Nigerian Bar Association meets regularly under the chairmanship of the Solicitor General of the Federation and Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Justice, to verify an authorized payment of judgment debts obtained against government. During the period under review, about 89 judgment creditors were paid in accordance with the judgments verified by the committee. As a result of the negotiation which took place between the committee and the various judgment creditors, which led to the reduction of interest charges by them on the judgment debt, government was able to save the sum of 13 billion, 360 million, 783,169 naira, 39 coal.
the nature of all the claims and the judgments are articulated in the paper to be distributed shortly. The period under review witnessed increased wave of terrorist activities, especially in the northern part of the country. The ministry was therefore confronted with the need to provide a legal framework that will not only prescribe offenses and appropriate penalties for those who engage in the terrorist activities, but also provide the legal framework to coordinate to coordinated response by relevant security agencies in order to fulfill government's obligation to provide security and protect the lives and properties of its people. In response to these exigencies, the Ministry worked assiduously in concert with relevant agencies of government, the United Nations, and our development partners to fashion out the Terrorism Prevention Act of 2011. This was the first comprehensive legal framework to deal with the menace of terrorism in the country. Furthermore, the nexus between money laundering and terrorist financing made it imperative for us to amend our money laundering legislation to bring it in conformity with global efforts to counter terrorist financing, as well as satisfy the requirement of the Financial Action Tax Force, known as FATA, the global standard setting body in that regard. This resulted in the Money Laundering Prohibition Act of 2011. The weakness identified in the Terrorism Prohibition Act of 2011 and the Money Laundering Act of 2011 led to further amendments which gave rise to the Terrorism Prevention Act 2011 as amended and Money Laundering Act of 2013. To achieve this, the Ministry worked tirelessly with other stakeholders to ensure that an appropriate legal framework for the war against terror Consistent, consistent with global standards is put in place. It will be recalled that recently, the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation relied on the provisions of the Terrorism Prevention Act No. 10 of 2011 as amended to seek the proscription of Jamatul Ahli Sunnah Ledwati Wal Jihad and Jamatul Ansarul Muslimina Biladis Sudan in Nigeria. The Federal High Court has since granted the order, which has been published as the Terrorism Prevention Prescription Order, Notice No. 91 of 2013. The court granted the prosecution order, which declared the activities of the two organizations in any part of the country as terrorism and illegal. B. Prescribed the existence of the two associations in any part of Nigeria, either in groups or as individuals, or by whatever name so called, Restrain any person or group of persons from participating in any manner whatsoever in any form of activities involving or consigning the prosecution of the collective intention or otherwise of the said group. This will make it possible to now apprehend and punish members of this prescribed organization for engaging in terrorist activities as well as confiscate any of the properties connected to terrorist activities. The complex, cases group work, the complex case work group set up in the Department of the Public Prosecution is currently undergoing intensive training on the prosecution of complex crimes to enable them effectively handle the prosecution of complex crimes such as terrorism, economic crime and corruption cases. International cooperation is a bedrock for concerted global action against organized crimes which often transcend national frontiers. Nigeria, as a responsible member of the international community, is enjoined to provide timely international cooperation to requesting countries in line with our obligation under various international legal instruments and the principle of reciprocity. Over the years, we've had to grapple with inherent administrative and bureaucratic red tapism, which often the country in which which often the country in default of our internal obligation is in default of our internal obligation in this respect. To address this challenge, the Central Authority Unit was established under the direct supervision of the Attorney General of the Federation during the period under review. This has resulted in specialized training and equipping of the unit for efficient and effective performance and timely response to requests for cooperation. The Ministry is grateful to the British Council and the United States Embassy for the support given to strengthen the unit. 
Furthermore, the mutual legal assistance in criminal matters within the Commonwealth Establishment and Enforcement Act, Laws of the Federation 2004, which regulates the provision of assistance in criminal matters, have become unsuitable for lagging behind new developments in the area of international cooperation. During the period under review, we proposed a mutual legal assistance in criminal matters bill 2013 to bring our legislation in tandem with modern trends and best practices. The passage of the bill into law changes that we have made, particularly the workable synergy with all competent authorities as well as other MDAs involved in the execution of all forms of international cooperation in criminal matters to fast track the processing of requests for mutual legal assistance. I have given a comprehensive table of all the mutual legal assistance that we've dealt with in my paper. The Extradition Act, CAP E25 laws of the Federation 2004, that governs extradition and other form of international cooperation, is also undergoing review to bring it in conformity with Nigeria's treaty obligation. Unlike the mutual legal assistance, extradition is a process that involves the judiciary. Consequently, all requests for extradition must be filed with the Federal High Court, where they undergo a full process of judicial review, after which the court determines whether or not there are cogent reasons why the suspect should not be surrendered to the requesting state. We've also made a table of all the requests, those dealt with, and how many have so far been held, I mean, uh, dealt with. During the period of that review, the Ministry testified his effort to trace and repatriate Nigeria's stolen assets abroad. In this connection, we've maintained effective liaison and communication with targeted jurisdictions to keep pace with asset recovery proceedings in those jurisdictions. In 2011, our close liaison and negotiation with the island of Jesse led to the recovery and repatriation of the sum five million pounds confiscated by the Royal Court of Jersey from Boswani, an Indian national and an associate of General Sani Abacha, and of his money transaction from Nigeria. We continue the liaison and negotiation with the Principality of Liechtenstein, which recently confiscated the sum of Euro 175 million from the Abacha family, an associated company in Liechtenstein following a confiscation order by the Supreme Court of Liechtenstein. However, the companies involved have lodged an appeal against the decision before the European Court of Justice in Strasbourg. As soon as the appeal is concluded, firm arrangements consistent with asset recovery provision of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption will be made to repatriate the, for the forfeited sums to Nigeria. The Ministry, in the discharge of its mandate, as the focal ministry under the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, is in the process of finalizing the national anti-corruption strategy to fight corruption in the country. While the different anti-corruption agencies have been doing a commendable job of fighting corruption in the country, Nigeria treaties of liquidation require her to have a national anti-corruption strategy that is holistic and inclusive. During the period under review, the Ministry has been working assiduously with the Interagency Tax Force, Civil Society, and our development partners to articulate a strategy with appropriate action plans for all the agencies involved in the war against corruption. A draft national anti-corruption strategy has been produced and circulated to relevant agencies and the civil society for their comments and inputs to ensure the necessary buy-in to the process. As soon as the stakeholders validation workshop scheduled for the 18th of July 2013 is held, the national action will be forwarded or finalized and sent to the Federal Executive Council for approval as a policy document. This is to give effect to the administration zero tolerance for corruption and commitment to fighting corruption in all its ramifications. The Ministry continued to improve on the discharge of its important function through the work of its legal department, its legal drafting department, apart from making the current impact to the current constitutional review process 
especially this, the second and third alteration of the constitution, the ministry also drafted several executive bills that were eventually passed into law by the National Assembly. For instance, by the National Assembly to give effect to government policy. For instance, in 2011, 12 executive bills were processed by the ministry and passed into law by the National Assembly. In 2012, out of the 18 executive bills proposed, 10 bills are pending consideration by the National Assembly. Seven bills are still under review, under the review by the Ministry of Justice, while one bill pending consideration by the Federal Executive Council. Table E and Table F, Table E and Table F below contain a summary of the bill processed by the Ministry of Justice. Apart from legislation, the ministry also processed 300 and also processed 33 statutory instruments during the period under review. Out of this number, 18 have been gazetted, 13 are ready to be gazetted, while well, one is pending review by the Ministry of Interior. We've also given a table of all those instruments that have been prepared and gazetted. The Ministry has continued to render quality legal advice to MDAs in order to protect national interests. During the period under review, the Ministry of the Solicitor's Department received 15 requests, legal advice, vetted 85 contracts agreement, held 21 reconciliation meetings, and processed 543 applications for consent to incorporate companies under Part C of the Company Others Act. The tables are also given in details. The National Assembly passed the Freedom of Information Act in 2011 with the objective of promoting of promote open government in Nigeria. It is, its fair application and implementation was made a strategic objective in my strategy for the implementation of justice sector reform in Nigeria, which was launched on the 6th of August 2011. To ensure its implementation and in fulfillment of my responsibilities under the Act, I issued an advisory memorandum on the 28th of January 2012 to all MDAs to sensitize them on the new regime of open government and their obligation under the Act. This was followed by a series of sensitization of workshops to engender understanding of the prescriptions of the Act. The National Assembly, sorry, in furtherance of my responsibility to ensure the implementation, to ensure the implementation of the Act, I issued the guidelines for the implementation of the FOI on the 12th of March 2012 to assist public institutions to interpret the Act as well as discharge their obligation, obligations. The feedback received so far from the public encourage us to embark on a further review of the guidelines which has been concluded and published as the revised guidelines on the Freedom of Information Act with the general assistance of the United Nations Development Program. The Ministry has also co-hosted Freedom of Information Zonal Workshops and trainings in Ekiti, Asaba and Abuja. We have also created a website and dedicated contact phone numbers which are listed in my presentation to enable the general public to engage with the Ministry on matters related to the implementation of the FOIA. During the period under review, the Ministry has submitted three annual reports, April 2011, April 2012, and April 2013 to the National Assembly on the implementation of the Act in compliance with the Attorney General Federation's reporting obligation under the Act. The cumulative effect of these measures and effort is to give effect to the administration's commitment to accountability, transparency, and open government. The Ministry continues to discharge its functions in order to enable Nigeria to comply with our obli obligations under various international legal instruments. The Ministry hosted the 51st session of the Asian African Legal Consultative Organization and the Chief Prosecutor of the International Criminal Courts in Abuja during the period under review. The Ministry and its parastatals have also been active in the work of the 6th Committee of the United Nations General Assembly 
the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, United Nations Convention on France, National Organized Crime, and the World Intellectual Property. To give effect to government's resolve to create an enabling environment for the reception of foreign investment, the Ministry, in collaboration with relevant MDAs, are in the process of negotiating investment promotion and protection agreements. These are the IPPAs with the Republic of Austria, European Union countries comprising Belgium, Czech, Latvia, Russia, Belarus, Canada, Japan, Vietnam, Qatar, Indonesia, Iran, and Pakistan. We've also given a table. During the period under review, the Ministry also prepared 14 instruments of ratification to give effect to Nigeria Multilateral and Bilateral Treaties Agreement. These include treaties, conventions, optional protocol under various United Nations, African Union and International Labour Organization and International Telecom Telecommunication Union. The bilateral agreements are with Austria, South Africa and Switzerland. This is in line with the Ministry's resolve to ensure timely compliance with international treaty obligations. We've also given a detailed table of all the obligations, the multilateral as well as the bilateral. The activities of the seven parastata supervised by the Ministry of Justice are discussed in great details in the paper presented. Permit me namely to touch on that of um, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Government's effort at sustaining the counter-narcotics and anti-money laundry wars in the country have been relentless in the face of ever-growing sophistication of the method employed by the perpetrators. The agency has maintained intensive and extensive coverage of all the nooks and crannies of the country, despite numerous challenges in order to ensure drug supply and demand reduction in the country. In the process, the delisting of Nigeria from the drug major list by the government of the United States of America since 2009 remains a remarkable achievement. <laughs> also given the table, in respect of legal aid, during the period of our review, the Legal Aid Council provided access to justice for prohibition of trafficking in persons and other related matters has continued to record remarkable achievement as it discharges its mandate in line with the United Nations Convention on Transnational Organized Crime. Current efforts at tackling trafficking in person and child labor include developing a, communi developing of a communication strategy aimed at strategic public enlightenment initiatives, production of storybooks for children on human trafficking, liaison with National Education Research Development Council to integrate human trafficking into, educa into the educational curriculum of Nigerian schools, launching of the I Am Priceless campaign in collaboration with the UNODC in the framework of the European Union sponsor, 10th EDF project. The Nigeria Institute of Advanced Legal Study is Nigeria's foremost institute or institution for legal research and advanced studies in law and related disciplines. As the primary source of information, training, research, and advice on legal matters in Nigeria, the Institute published 37 books during this period under review and held several training programs on different aspects of the law. Student enrollment for this period comprises 10 LLM, 3 diplomas, 8 PhD for 2010-2011, 9 LLM, 8 diplomas, and 7 PhD for 2011-2012, and 14 LLM and 11 diplomas, 5 PhD for 2012-2013. The research achievements of the Institute are presented in the table below. In respect of the Council of Legal Education, two new campuses came on board the Nigeria Law School during this period and are located in Yenegua, Bayaza State, and Yola Adamawa State. They are expected to take in 1,500 students each from the 2013-2014 academic session, leading to an, in to an increase in the overall intake of students by the school to 8,000. To 8, With this development, the school can absorb all graduating students from approved law faculties. 
The school has undertaken a number of projects geared towards providing conducive environment for students, and those details are provided. The council has also constituted a committee to review the LLB curriculum in faculties of law in Nigeria to meet the current needs of the country. It has also cleared a backlog close to 10,000 students, which arose from over admission by some universities. In all, 4,532 students to law lawyers were called to the bar in 2011-2012. The Nigerian Copyright Commission, established in August 1989, has continued to carry out a statutory mandate of administering, protecting, promoting, and enforcing and regulating copyright in Nigeria. In sum total, I would like to express my ministry's gratitude to His Excellency President Goodluck Ebele Jonathan for the immeasurable support and encouragement we've received. Let me also seize this opportunity to appreciate the vital role of the media in publicizing the activities of the ministry and its parastatals. This has continued to raise public awareness of the concept and practice of the rule of law and all its precepts, as well as the role of the Ministry of Justice in ensuring that the government and the entire citizens of this country respect and observe the rule of law. I thank you for your kind attention. So permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to invite the Attorney General and Honorable Minister of Justice, Mohamed Bello Adoke, to tell Nigerians what he's doing in the justice sector. Honorable Minister, sir. My brother and my friend, uh, Honorable Minister of Information, Chief Laboran Maku, thank you very much for the very kind sentiment expressed about my person and I mean, classifying me as a constitutional purist. My sister, my good friend, the Minister of Aviation, my brother.